I'm Cynthia Lazaris and I collect wax. I love everything rare, weird, and wonderful. I have been spending my entire life traversing swap meets, garage sales, and auctions looking for the newest piece to add to my collection. If you look around the room, there's a little bit of everything. Join me on my journey to find the weird and the wonderful. I've always loved the silent movie era, which is old Hollywood to me, which conjures up all kinds of names in my head, which is Rudolph Valentino, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, um, Mae Murray, Theta, Vera. There's just so many names out there that just are still alive with us today. One of the things I wanted to show you in my personal collection, which I like to think is my beginning of the silent movie era, which are these lobby cards. As you can see, there's two of them. And what's so unique about these movie cards is they did come from a silent movie and where they were for many, many years after the silent movies, they were in the residence of Houdini. When I was at the autograph show, I happened to stumble onto a man who had an interesting collection. And then he said, do you like Houdini? Would you like to have something that was Houdini's? And of course, you know what I would say. <laughs> and then when he told me that they came out of his home and what he used them for is for filing. Um, because he had so many of these lobby cards and he wanted to make use of them, he used them in his files to uh, use as file holders. Another part of my collection, which I love Charlie Chaplin, and I'm hoping someday to get a Charlie Chaplin head, wax head, so I could put one next to this machine. This is called a mutoscope. And these were very much uh, around the late 1800s to about 1929. Uh, these were used in Nickelodeons that people would find amusement centers that were located in cities. And what it was is it's a series of postcards or um, I guess that's what it would be is postcards and they're on a wheel and the side and you put a penny in and then when it goes in sequence it's animation and it's a story this one happens to be Charlie Chaplin the fight um, now this is not the original picture that came with it we happened to find this one and matched it up um, this one was actually working condition. We just did a little bit of minor restoration where we put, um, it came with this uh, frame, which is original to it, but we just had to change this inside. Um, I also have Charlie Chaplin's autograph right back here. And I also have an advertisement from a local newspaper for Harold Lloyd's uh, movie called Grandma's Boy. And I have a wonderful tickets to the movie theater right back here. In fact, let me see if I can take this off the wall so you can see this. <clears throat> what this is, is this was an actual advertisement for Harold Lloyd's Grandma's Boy. And these are silent movie tickets that I was just able to uh, put together in this piece. And it goes on and on and on, things that I have as far as uh, silent movie because there was really no interest in it for a lot of people and just recently um, you can tell just from Facebook that there's a lot of Harold Lloyd, Rudolph Valentino, Charlie Chaplin clubs where people can exchange their thoughts and ideas about them and uh, I do have a dress that I'm going to be dressing one of my wax figures uh, that came from a silent movie era too. Um, I've almost traced it back to Gary Cooper's lilac time. And so that should be fun putting it together. Um, just recently at the flea market, I happened to find this Charlie Chaplin wood cutout that uh, came out of a museum. And I thought, oh, he would be a great greeter in my wax museum. So, uh, but I am still looking for a Charlie Chaplin head so I can put together a Charlie Chaplin wax figure. 
this is my son Dimitri. He's a collector just like I am. And as you can look around this room, he collects automotive, uh, drag racing, vintage movie stuff. So can you tell me a little bit about what you just found and, and how you came across this piece? It's very interesting what I'm looking at. Yeah, so uh, just picked it up this weekend. Uh, not quite uh, 1920s old Hollywood, but definitely old Hollywood with uh, 1950s. This is a moviola, and this is what you would be editing uh, films on, 35 millimeter film. Uh, what's exciting about this one is that it does uh, sound as well. Uh, so you have your sound head on one side, and you have uh, the optical visual head on this side. Um, it is unfortunately missing um, a couple pieces, which are the two uh, reels that would go on top. So still looking for something like that. Uh, we're thinking that this is probably late 1950s, early 1960s, because after 1966, the uh, Moviola brand was sold to a different company. So this still has the original Moviola uh, tagging on it. Um, but yeah, it's a great piece. It's heavy. It's, uh, you know, it has that great kind of uh, aqua green 1950s, early 60s look. Um, and <clears throat> it still works, which is great. Um, my favorite part on the piece is uh, the counter here, which will show how many uh, feet your uh, how many feet of film you're going through. Uh, it has pedals on the bottom, so you can have uh, as you're working, your feet would be working the visual and the sound as well. Like a so pump? It's uh, so it uh, every time you would hit the pedal, it would activate one or the other. So it would be um, uh, it's it's rubbing your head and your stomach at the same time. I would imagine it's a, it's a tough uh, machine to work. Oh, I can imagine. Now, how in the world would you find a piece like this today? Uh, so it's one of those things where you just, you don't know what you're gonna find. Um, we end up going on Facebook Marketplace and this popped up out in Long Beach. Uh, you know, we, uh, we saw these at the Hollywood Museum and once we saw them, we thought, oh, what, how great that would be to have in our collection. And uh, sure enough, popped up, price was right. Go out there, you have to, when you see something like that, you have to drop what you're doing and get it. That's great. And did you make any contacts or anything with the person who sold this to you? Well, yeah, that's, you know, the most important thing when it comes to uh, buying and collecting is the people that you meet along the way. Uh, the mm -hmm. person that we met, uh, I guess, deals in hand crank uh, 1920s cameras, uh, late teens cameras, something that I would love to have in our collection, but those go for $10,000 nowadays. Um, but you know, now now we have another contact who, you know, who knows those pieces, uh, enjoys collecting old motion picture equipment. Um, and one of the uh, more exciting pieces that he ended up just giving us was a 1912 uh, Powers uh, projector, the base. Um, so back in the early 1900s, 1912 to 1916, to be exact with this piece, um, when they were projecting silent movies, they would use an arc light projector. And an arc light is um, similar to arc welding, which is uh, a, a diode and a uh, it's a piece of electricity going through, and that arc light would create the light that would project the film, which, if you were to look back on it, is incredibly dangerous without well, flammable. Well, with the nitrate film. Yeah, so. Oh my um, goodness. So these projectors are massive. I mean, they, they're, you know, you know, a thousand pounds. They're uh, intricate pieces. Uh, so he had this base, uh, it's a cast iron base. Um, where it still has the uh, the bottom reel and the uh, the belt drive, uh, and he also had the top take up reel for the film. Um, it's one of those things where he just said he didn't need it. I thought, why not? Let's take it. Maybe someday we'll find the rest of the parts. But uh, mm -hmm. until then, I might just turn it into a, a uh, end table, which would be very cool because that would just really set the whole tone for your um, camera movie collection. Um, but can we take a look at this piece and be able to see it? Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead. We can turn it on. Um, what's exciting about it, uh, one of my favorite pieces uh, is right here. I don't know if I'll, I'll, we'll get a shot closer, but how these actually work. Wow, look at that. Just some of the ingenuity even in these latches. Uh-huh. Um, 
And, uh, but yeah, everything works. It's so nice when you get something that's, you know, 50, 60 years old, even a hundred years old and plug it in. You have no idea if it's going to work <laughs> or not. Um, but it's exciting piece. It's a uh, nice to put in the collection. And, uh, again, you never know what you're going to find on a Saturday afternoon. Well, yes. And that's right. As I said, keep your doors open. You never know. And most of the stuff, and this may sound kind of weird but maybe some of you can relate to it um some of the stuff i feel finds us um it's we're meant to have it um it seeks us out in some unusual ways and i think this is what happened with you on saturday just happened to stumble across it 